Our vision is to inspire the world and remove limiting beliefs in your mind. At Sprinkle with Hope, our mission is to inspire you to live your best life by sharing stories of hope, resilience, courage, and overcoming adversity. We believe that everyone has the potential to lead a joyful, fulfilling life, and we hope to encourage and motivate you to pursue your dreams. Welcome to the Sprinkled with Hope podcast. Welcome back to your Sprinkle with Hope podcast and your host, Jason. And today, Shane and I are super, super excited to welcome with us Kristen Butler. Super exciting to be able to talk to her. We've been seriously had this thing circled on our calendar for, for forever. And, you know, we've had to reschedule a couple of times, which, you know, that that's how these things go. But we are just so excited to be able to talk to Kristen. And, and if you don't know who she is, she created the power of positivity, which to me, I, I mean, I've been seeing that stuff for many, many years now. I've been following Power of Positivity, and I just love that that whole atmosphere of creating an environment where we can share quotes and things and, and just help each other grow. And so, Kristen, I saw one of your posts just actually this morning says, for a good life, stay in good company. Negative people awaken negative parts inside of us. And I just kind of wanted to start out with that. And just talk about how, you know, so oftentimes those negative people in our life do bring out that negative and we want to talk about positive things, but you know, what, how do you kind of see that negative people affect you and affect those around you? You know, I really think it's important to set boundaries. Um, some people in our life and they may be going through whatever they're going through. And I don't even like to la necessarily label them negative, sure. but um, those that if we are continuously around and they're making us feel bad, um, sometimes I like to like look inside and see like, what is this mirroring for me? Um, but there are times when if it's too detrimental, we have to set boundaries and boundaries are actually so healthy for us. So we can be around those people, but how do we react? How do we take that in? How much time do we spend with them? Um, that is just really important because otherwise we get caught up in that and it just becomes a part of who we are. That is so true. I think boundaries for everybody, especially mm -hmm. those that we have a lot of uh, interaction with every day, is very important. And I think sometimes we shy away from those boundaries because we don't want to hurt people, but they're, they might be hurting us if we're not setting those healthy boundaries. Kristen, I'm curious, what inspired you to start Power of Positivity? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was experiencing my own rock bottom and this was a decade and a half ago. And there's so many different things in life that can help you come out of something like that. But for me, it was positive thinking and really just embracing a positive lifestyle. And when I began to see the momentum in every area of my life um, take place and in such an amazing direction, it felt almost magical. And it was like, wow, I'm just changing my mind and my habits in a positive direction and I'm getting this much momentum. You know, I just felt like I have to share this with people. Like, why doesn't everybody just know about this? You know, I mean, I knew it was effective, but not to the level of when you really commit to truly changing your thoughts every day and really spending time with positive energy in the morning and in the evening, you know, focusing on gratitude, what's going right, what do I love about myself, you know, all of these things um, intentionally, truly intentionally, um, it's just life changing. And I was seeing results a decade and a half ago. And, you know, I wasn't my life was not perfect, but I was seeing the progress. And I just started sharing it from there, you know? I love that. There almost seems to be this like common theme, you know, when we talk to individuals such as yourself, where they almost hit this rock bottom, you know, that you called it, or, you know, they've hit a low spot in their, in their life and they, they've decided, Hey, I'm going to change. I'm the, I'm the one that controls, you know, my destiny, my 
future forward, my path forward. I'm going to take action today. And so how have you kind of seen that action, you know, affect you and affect your life as you've, as you really hit that rock bottom and then move forward? I mean, a decade and a half ago, I didn't like myself. I didn't feel like I had healthy relationships. I wasn't healthy in my body. I was obese. I was financially broke, um, bankrupt really. And just literally every area of my life was just at a pits. And it was when I started to say like, you know what, I'm going to do what feels good. And, you know, I'm going to start caring for myself in ways that I need right now. And I have to put myself first because before I was just caring about success and caring about other people and just Mm -hmm so much outward care that I wasn't taking inward care Mm -hmm. and living a positive lifestyle is really going inward. Um, Sure. Being selfless is important, but we have to fill our cup if we want to help others. So I really took an inward journey and, you know, it takes a lot of work. You have to analyze your thinking and how are you feeling about yourself? But when you start to love yourself, Others will love you. And um, it's it's really a mirror. The world is a mirror of how you feel inside. Yeah, I, I appreciate the fact that you're opening up so much to us and our listeners. I mean, to share your story of, yeah, I was in a, in a very dark place, but you came out of it. Anybody can come out of it if they choose and decide and then take action. Um, you're an example of that. So we appreciate the fact that you're, you're now on the other side of things, which is a positive. I'm sure a lot of your um, life is in order and you, you're very happy with those type of things. So what, what would you give advice to someone who might be hearing this and thinking, gosh, I, I, I was in a, I'm in a position where Kristen was, which I just feel like my life is on a spiral downward. What would you, what advice would you give them? You know, um, take it small. Don't judge yourself for where you are. I was judging myself too much. And the more I judged myself, the more I judged myself and it was a continuous spiral. Um, And that's a horrible place to be because um, you'll never change in that place. It'll just feel like things are getting heavier and heavier. When I released judgment over myself about my circumstances and my past, I was able to be in the moment And I was also able to feel grateful for what was going right. You know, I still had a bed to sleep on. You know, I still had people who cared about me. And when I started small with those little things, you know, hey, it's a sunny day, you know, um, I, I can go on a walk with my dog. These very little things are actually so important because we're making a commitment to ourselves and we're choosing to see the positive, no matter how small it may be. And it really does create forward momentum to bigger things. Um, and if we start small, it, it, it can really make a difference. So I think doing that from that place is the most important thing, starting to look at yourself in a more positive way. And when we start small, it it seems insignificant day by day. It really does. You're like, I don't really see a difference. (laughs) You're not going to see a huge difference the next day. You might feel a little different, but you have to take score of each step, you know, because it's, it's really about day by day and taking it um, from that perspective. I I love that. And I, I can feel your energy and your spirit and just, you know, your light and, you know, that, uh, you're obviously in a much different place than you were a decade and a half ago. Right. And so, uh, I think we can sense and feel that. Um, but something that really kind of struck a chord with me was, you know, I think oftentimes we're, we're in this, maybe a good place within ourselves, but we're not helping others and you were helping others, but weren't helping yourself. And so how did you kind of see, see that as, as being different than maybe how others are, you know, because I think a lot of times people are are not willing to help others. And so that's where they're they're missing a little bit. But you were kind of in that mode already. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit and kind of what you saw. Uh, the fact that you were helping other, uh, others and wanted to love others and, and do that, but you didn't quite have it 
all together within yourself? I think it was a slow progression. You know, I was the oldest child growing up. And so I was used to just caring for others and being a caregiver. And then as I grew up, I realized, wow, you get a lot of positive feedback from others when you care for them, you know? And so I took it to the extreme. Sometimes I can do that. Um, That's why I have to work on balance and always seeing things in a balanced way, because when you go to one extreme, you're going to, it's kind of like, um, it's just going to bounce back or like boomerang back at you, you know? So, um, it was a progression, just like I got there from day by day, prioritizing other people and other things. And I got out of it day by day by prioritizing myself, still caring for other people, sure, but realizing sure. like, Hey, you need to work out today or you need to eat healthy or you need to take a shower, you know, because when I hit rock bottom, even in insignificant things like brushing my teeth and taking a shower just kind of like became like not even important when I was that low. Mm. So just beginning to prioritize yourself and balancing that with loving others. It's I just think balance is the key. Love what you're saying. I love the balance <laughs> that you're talking about. I love that that you talk about um, being intentional with everything that we're doing, because I think often we just get in this mind that we're, we're just going about life without really any intention. And I think that intention directs us in the right way. It certainly, I think has for you. So I'm curious what other things this is Kristen working on now, other than power of positivity, if there's nothing that's, I mean, it's a, for those of you who don't know, I think you have over 50 million followers, which is amazing that is so incredible yeah so um 14 years ago we started power of positivity and it was just like i just wanted to help people and spread the message and the last few years i'm like people um say that they need the action and the accountability so that's why um in 2021 i created the three minute positivity journal so that people could get up and just spend a few minutes a day like focusing on gratitude and what they were going to do that day how they were going to take care of themselves um and then in the evening like how did they win the day no matter how small you know um what are they grateful for and kind of journal their thoughts, check in with their mental health. Um, These are the things that I was doing every day for myself and were making a difference. And so I created that so that other people could do it more easily, you know, because what we do is we get distracted or we forget and we're like, oh, that's right. I wanted to make a gratitude list or, oh, that's right. I was supposed to write down my wins, you know? So I made that journal, but then in the last, year i've been working on the comfort zone which comes out in april april 18th actually and this is actually everyone kept asking me how did you create the power of positivity like what did you do and it was like i can't really give necessarily advice because i was um you know just harnessing my gifts inside and everybody else needs to harness their gifts so what I really did was expand my comfort zone from a place of fear and lack and limitation. And instead of constantly stepping out of it, I expanded. And at first I was kind of shameful about it. Like this is really going against what everyone says, you know, to prioritize your comfort, but it really actually worked for me. And, um, and so in the book, I actually talk about how I expanded my comfort zone, how I went from harnessing my power to achieving and creating power of positivity in the flow and with less stress than I was experiencing, you know, when I created other businesses or did other things. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about that because it is going against the current norm, but I'm ready to create like this new paradigm and this new shift in thinking that when we prioritize our comfort and we expand from that place, And we make more things comfortable, even the things that we're afraid of, our life truly feels abundant and it feels, you know, comfortable, literally. I mean, that's what we want, right? We want to be happy and have um, a fulfilling career and um, great connections. So I'm really excited about this book because it's literally what I did um, to create power positivity and get out of rock bottom. Wow. 
like you said so much there, it's hard to even unpack all of the things that you were talking. <laughs> I, I really, and I hope a lot of people go back and listen to what you're, what you're talking about. Cause I do think we have to do that paradigm shift. And I do think we have mm-hmm. to get outside of our comfort zone to get to a new comfortable, uh, you, you know, and I think a lot of times people do fear those kinds of things to, to put themselves out there in the, in the world. And, and, but like you say, now you have a, now you're comfortable where you're at. And I think it's like that uncomfortableness to get to a new comfortable that, that is a hard transition. It's, it's, it is that paradigm shift. And so you kind of mentioned something about, um, you know, writing down your wins at the end of the day. Um, and some people may think, okay, I've got to do something big or, or grandiose to have it considered a win. What, what are maybe some, uh, a couple of wins that you could see that people could write down that they may not necessarily think is a win. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, in my journal, I talk about like your priority goals. So whatever you had for priority, if you committed and did those things, I count that as a win because you said you were going to do them and you did them, whether that's, you know, organizing a shelf or cleaning out a room or calling your dad or whatever that is, whatever that commitment you said you were going to do in the morning, it's so important to do that and then count that as a win. Um, You know, really the things that happen that might feel like, wow, I didn't even expect that. Or even things that are small, like I called my dad, whatever is meaningful to you, it can be very small or it can be big. But when we count that as like a win, then we're like creating that positive energy so that bigger things can be counted as a win. You know, we always have to start small. And even now, like, I have really big wins and sometimes I have small wins like, hey, I worked out and I said I was going to work out and I did like that's a win for me, you know, or I ate healthy. I said I was going to and I did, you know, or I went outside and I went for a long walk like that's totally a win, you know, I love it. That's great. Yeah. I love that you're talking about you keep going back to small and simple action Yeah, is really what is changing or could change anybody's life. If you just decide that and then start small and keep going small, at some point you're going to look back and go, wow, I'm like way up this mountain and I never even thought I walked up it. So I love that. Yeah. And it, and it feels good from that place, you know, because, um, something that can seem insurmountable just takes a few small steps a, a day and in the right direction. I a hundred percent wholeheartedly agree. Uh, I, I, you know, I can uh, uh, appreciate all the things that you're talking about because I think that's really what the core is of of what we should be doing on a daily basis and and having gratitude for the things that we have, like a home and these other things that that some aren't as fortunate to have, you know, and so we take them for granted often. So I really appreciate this conversation we're having and and near the end of our podcast, Shane and I do a thing that we call the double down dose. And it's two really simple questions that we like asking all of our guests. Um, but we get such a myriad of responses. And so the first question is, uh, to you, Kristen, what, what is your definition of hope? My definition of hope. Um, Hmm. That's a really good one. You know, I think hope is tied to dreams and that creative energy that we have inside of that something can be better. And so I feel like hope is like a promise of the future for us that we can kind of cling to, to know that better days are ahead or better moments or our dreams are still possible. Um, Hope for me heals. When I was at very dark times, Mm -hmm. I only had hope and some that might feel like hope isn't like attainable. Some of the things that we hope for actually hope was what got me through the hard times. And even today, like things that I hope for, it, it gets me through and it can heal the past, but it can also like project me towards my future. You know, I really hope is a very powerful energy. Mm, I love it. We asked the question and we've never heard that. Nobody, no, nobody's talked about dreams, which it makes sense. Like I haven't thought about it in that aspect, but it, you're absolutely right. Like it is tied to dreams. So the second question of double down dose is how would you define love? How would I define love? Um, 
I feel like love is in almost everything and anything. And it, again, is a very powerful energy that um, brings us connection, connection to ourselves, connection to others, to the world. It's like just runs through everything, you know, um, and, you know, even plants and, you know, the trees. I feel like love is just everywhere, but we have to tune into that and feel it and see it if we want if we want more of it um, a lot of times it exists and it's there and we have boundaries and walls or even borders that are preventing us from feeling it so when we can tap into that and gratitude really helps with tapping into love i feel like but uh, again it's just a powerful positive energy that can really transform how we feel each day Wow, this has been a phenomenal discussion. I'm, I'm sure Shane can concur. <laughs> yes. Uh, but th this really has been so enlightening for me. I, I love talking to different individuals all over the planet, um, you know, just about how they've managed to get beyond some of these things, these fears and stuff that hold us back from really becoming our true self and our the potential inside of us to be great, right? Yeah, absolutely. So Kristen, thank you, Kristen, so much. Yeah, thank oh. you so much. It's been so awesome to see you open up to us and our listeners and just share what you've learned and so much amazing advice and counsel that you've given us. It has been a pleasure. So thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. You had amazing questions, <laughs> very deep thinking questions. So thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. And And so sometimes I like to ask, you know, uh, near the end, what, you know, is there any kind of last parting words that you, you know, you feel inspired to, to share with the audience that they're listening today, maybe something we haven't talked about, or uh, just any last kind of, uh, you know, comments or parting words that you'd like to share? Yeah, I think that it's important to remember to never give up no matter what, if something is very important to you, keep going and prioritize trust, whether you believe in a higher power or not, just even trusting yourself, um, trust and keep going and never give up because this life has a lot of ups and downs, but there's so many more ups that just make it so worth it and your dreams are still possible or that life that you envision is still possible. So just keep going. Awesome. What a way to end. Thank you so much, Kristen. Yeah. Thank you so much.